If ever there was the epitome of a self-made man, it was John Austin East, Saskatoon's foundry pioneer. This, then, is his story. One of 12 children raised by William East and his wife Mary, John Austin East was born on the 2nd of January, 1881, and raised on his father's farm in the Grand Valley Township of Amaranth. While still in his teens, the young East began his working career acquiring the skills of industrial machinery. Initially through an apprenticeship with the Massey Harris Company in Toronto. However, he would soon move on to broaden his experience by working at the Dominion Radiator Company and the Morrison Brass Foundry in that same city. In 1903, he continued to hone his foundry craft and mechanical skills in the United States, where he was employed by both the Alice Chalmers Company and the Gates Ironworks in Chicago, Illinois, whilst later moving to the Buddha Engine Works in that same state. This latter experience would serve him well when he would later integrate the rebuilding of auto engines and retailing of auto parts into his future career path. The illustration on the left shows the Massey Harris plant in Toronto in the 1890s, where John East first started working as a machinist apprentice while still in his teens. The photo on the right shows a view of the Gates Ironworks in Chicago as it appeared in 1896. Except for a brief return to Ontario for a period of about five or six years, John East would continue to move around in the northeastern United States, gaining experience in both the foundry and mechanical machinery trades. Further stops included Cincinnati and Canton in Ohio, Utica in New York, and Franklin, Pittston, and Philadelphia in Pennsylvania. In 1905, however, he would return to Canada, moving west to Winnipeg with his wife Elizabeth and infant son Melville to find employment at the Vulcan Ironworks until moving once again to Strathcona, Alberta, where he joined the foundry and machine shop of the Jackson Brothers. After working for the company for some while, he's decided to take advantage of a homesteading opportunity at what was shortly to become in his free Alberta. Unfortunately, he found that due to a continuous series of hardships over a period of two years, he was unable to sustain himself and his family and turned out of necessity to contract plastering, a skill that he had developed whilst constructing his farmhouse. At this point, he was persuaded to return to Jackson Brothers and was still working for them in 1909 when word spread regarding the prosperity of the fledgling city of Saskatoon. And John East decided to pay it a visit. To his surprise, he discovered that due to the lack of a community-based foundry, the city was purchasing the manhole covers for his expanded water distribution program and sewer system from sources in Regina. East approached city council with a proposal to establish a foundry in Saskatoon if he could be assured of obtaining the contract for the production of the manhole covers and frames. On the strength of a promise to this effect and considerable general encouragement from members of Saskatoon's council, he decided to move to the city and set up shop. On the right is a recent photo 
of an original John East 1913 manhole cover that is still located on Avenue C North in front of the original foundry site. By early 1910, John East had purchased 50 feet of land on Avenue C North, just south of the CPR station and near the Farmers Lumber Company. Soon after, the small 20 by 30 foot building was constructed on the site and the John A. East Foundry and Machine Company began operations. In 1914, a mere four years after East had constructed his original small foundry, both the size of the physical plant and the number of staff had increased dramatically. In this interior shot, John East himself can be seen on the far left. Shown here are exterior views of the expanding John East Ironworks Foundry in 1914. In the first dozen years of his existence, and with the city of Saskatoon's manhole contract providing a base, John East's business expanded rapidly. With the city of Saskatoon in the midst of its pre-war boom, the foundry found itself providing the entire iron and pipe requirements for the new city pumping station and filtration plant. Plus the structural iron work for several new business blocks in Saskatoon. John's youngest brother Frank joined the firm in the 1920s. He assumed the role of shop supervisor and had a huge impact on the company's fortunes by introducing a fire hydrant line that he had modified to operate in sub-zero temperatures. This product would prove to be very popular in Western Canadian cities and was used as far north as Alaska. It was during this period that John East's sons, J.W. Buss East and Melville Mel Austin East also became involved in the business. By 1920, East business was flourishing. In addition to castings for water and sewer connections of many types, John East was also providing cast gears, flame sheets, pistons, piston rings and gears for almost any make of tractor. The company name had been shortened to John East Ironworks in 1914 and began promoting its services through such trademark slogans as, if it's made of cast iron, we make it, and if it's done in a machine shop, we do it. The entire plant at this time consisted of a foundry, patent shop, blacksmith shop, machine shop, and oxyacetylene welding room. As part of the construction of the 25th Street Bridge from 1913 to 1916, the John East Ironworks provided the bridge's bronze expansion plates. Then at $2,392.08, the largest bronze contract ever awarded in Western Canada, the bridge's original elegant cast lamp standards were also supplied by East's company. However, Sadly, these were removed in the late 1950s and replaced with more efficient, but far less ornate modern fixtures. When the new Saskatchewan Legislative Building opened in 1912, it was John East Ironworks ornamental lamp standards that graced its grounds. In 1930, the old Victoria Theatre on 2nd Avenue South was rejuvenated and renamed the Tivoli. John East was chosen to create the ornate wrought iron balconies for the new facade. One of the unique John East ironwork creations still remaining is the circular iron fire escape 
attached to the Arand apartment block on 11th Street East. In 1932, the growing success of John East Ironworks Limited, as it was by now named, enabled East to purchase the old Great Western Hotel at 312 Second Avenue South for $35,000, whilst also undertaking the expenses of a major upgrade and renaming it the Yale Hotel. The building still stands today as the now defunct Continental Hotel. However, his ownership of this property was relatively short-lived, as in 1936, a deal was made with Saskatoon businessman and Albany hotel owner, Victor Collot, to trade the Yale plus cash for an automotive parts business that Collot owned. The total dollar value of the deal was estimated at $60,000, which, in the midst of the depression, represented the largest private transaction Saskatoon had seen for five years. The decade from 1930 to 1940 would prove to be a difficult one for John East Ironworks. Mel East, who had become the general manager in 1935, reflected afterwards that the company was very close to going under at that time. Apart from the odd diversionary project, such as Frank East building a special crane for the Broadway Bridges construction, the firm had to rely on manufacturing such mundane items as coal chutes and gravity-fed warm air furnaces in order to keep their business afloat. By the mid-1940s, however, things had improved greatly, as by this time, John East had created a substantial business as a supplier of cast iron stove parts that they had manufactured from close to 9,000 different patents. An inventory of approximately 19,000 interchangeable parts was available to the 1,100 hardware dealers located from the Lakehead to Victoria that the company then dealt with. In 1940, the company celebrated its 30th anniversary. And these contemporary photos from the period show, from left to right, the exterior of the John East Ironworks plant, John East himself in his office, sub-zero fire hydrants awaiting shipment to customers, and the casting room of the John East Foundry, showing plant superintendent Frank East on the far right. With the onset of World War II, the Foundry contributed to Canada's war effort by manufacturing six-pound shell extractors and a variety of aircraft and binocular parts for the military. During this period, John East Automotive Supplies the auto machine shop and parts division of the business, grew substantially in both Saskatoon and at the branch operation in Prince Albert. This was due in great part to the fact that John East had become one of the first companies in North America to offer a rebuilt engine exchange program. In 1951, John Austin East retired and handed over the reins of president to his eldest son, Melville. Sadly, John's retirement was short-lived as he died just one year later at the comparatively young age of 71. He was laid to rest beside his wife, Elizabeth, and their infant daughter in Saskatoon's Woodlawn Cemetery. The 1950s and 60s saw the company expand both in plant size and product diversification. And John East Steinworks became a major supplier of steel conveyor channels and metal castings for
for the burgeoning potash industry. Ornamental iron and other metalwork products were also in demand. And in 1959, the company fabricated the metal for the Robert Murray sculpture, Rainmaker. This somewhat controversial piece of art had been commissioned by the city of Saskatoon and is now the centerpiece of a fountain in front of City Hall. In 1965, John's grandson, William Bill East, became the third generation of the family to assume the president's chair. And with Frank East's retirement, Bill's brother Jack took over the day-to-day -day management of the foundry. In 1975, after 65 years under the John East name, the family sold the business to John Rasmussen Salvage Company, who continued to operate out of the East's plant five anchor location for a brief time. However, ownership of that company was eventually sold to Newbury Energy Limited, who were later to file for bankruptcy. By 1983, the property had been sold off to a developer and the buildings subsequently scheduled for demolition. Today, the site is occupied by a strip mall, dominated by a large Chinese restaurant. But for 65 years, John East's enterprise and skill and the company he headed were inexorably woven into the basic fabric of Saskatoon. The city of Saskatoon, ever mindful of East's contribution, honored him by naming John East Avenue in the Hudson Bay Park area after him. On December the 8th, 2021, John Austin East's grandson, John Jack East, sadly passed away, severing one of the final major family links to the extraordinary business that he had created.